Well, thank you so much, Tara, for joining us here today on the Author Revolution podcast. I'm super excited that you're here. So for my audience who is maybe new to you, um, could you tell them a little bit about who you are and what you do? Sure. Thanks for having me. This has been, uh, I'm excited to be here. Uh, my name is Tara Kremen and I'm the director of Kobo Writing Life for English language that we, that I focus on. Um, so I basically run Kobo Writing Life's indie platform for English speakers. Um, and I am originally from Ireland, which is why the accent is a little bit all over the place, but I've been in Canada now for almost 10 years. Um, but yeah, so basically what my team work on is, uh, helping authors get their books out there, um, their, whether it's audiobooks, ebooks, um, you know, educating people on the new um, features that Kobo has, such as our subscription program, Kobo Plus, and all of the brand new devices that we have. I think one just went to stores today. Um, so uh, there's a lot of stuff going on. So it's kind of my job to just spread the, spread the word. <laughs> okay, well, tell us a little bit about this new thing here then. So the newest device, so we, we have two of them coming out. Um, they're quite exciting, actually. The first one is the Kobo Sage, which is, um, I have it somewhere. Oh, it's right here. It is the Kobo Sage, which is kind of like, it still has uh, your buttons on the side here. It's a smaller e-reader. Yeah. But what's different with this one is that it's um it's our second device now that um it also has a stylus. So you can actually take notes and mark up your books as you're going through them. Um, so the first one being the Kobo Ellipsa, which is this guy, um, nice. which is a bigger one. Um, so that might be helpful to writers. Um, we know we've kind of gotten feedback that editors are using it, you know, just making notes and, and writing in the margin. Um, really? I'm a destroyer of books. I like books <laughs> to look like they're read. So yes. this, this is the device for me. Um, <laughs> New so, moniker. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> destroyer. Of, yeah, I should do that. Love it. That on my, whenever like, business cards are needed again, when I, when I actually see people in person. I love it. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so the Kobo Sage, it's just a really great device. And then the Kobo Libra um, 2 is the other one. And what's brand new about that device is that it's our very first um, electronic e-reading device that we have integrated with audiobooks. Oh, so cool. you can connect to Bluetooth and kind of like um, you can still read your ebooks, but you can also connect and have your audiobooks on your e-reader right there. So uh, it's pretty exciting. It's an exciting week. <laughs> I will say that's that's absolutely terrific. Oh my God. I didn't even know about the new ones that were coming out. So now I'm like, Ooh, now I need to go check out the store. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. Yeah. Now, Tara, I can't remember when we were talking um, before, but are you a published author as well? Is that what brought you into the sphere or was there a different reason? I am not. Um, my mom does tell people that I'm in Canada writing books, which is a lie. Um, <laughs> she doesn't, she doesn't, doesn't know. <laughs> no, doesn't really understand. Um, no, I come from, uh, my background is in literature. Um, like I studied uh, American literature and film, so I always really liked that. Um, and then came just working in publishing um, when I moved to Canada. I just, I've always been a big lover of books um, and my kind of you know, working at Cobra really suited me because my dad was always a tech wizard or like gadget person, was always into the latest like gadgets. Like, you know, my brother and my dad was always breaking over up radios and, and doing that sort of stuff. <laughs> yes. um, so in my mind, Kobo sort of combines like um, the tech wizardry of like these new devices that are fun with also getting to work with books, um, which is kind of just what I like to do. <laughs> it's like, like to read. So um, no, I'm not uh, an author myself, but just come from like the publishing side. Um, but I don't have a traditional like publishing school background or anything like that, which I think makes it a little bit different because I'm just very, very ingrained in the indie world. That's awesome. So is that because you're more of a, a reader then? Like, were you always a reader that kind of just carried through to everything or? I was a reader later in life, actually. Like, oh. um, like it, was, it was definitely when I was in university and I, I taught English abroad after university and, and did some traveling. And it was then really just having that free time. Um, and, you know, when you're a literature student, you know, you have a lot of assigned reading. Yes. And so once I got out of that and I was like, oh, I can just like read whatever I want. Like, that's when it really sort of spoke to me and I became so interested in it. Um, and I did some like freelance journalism work, but nothing too major. Um, but no, I... Uh, I admire the people that really can can put their all into writing books. Uh, I'm I'm not quite brave enough. <laughs> <laughs> you could get there though. We'll work on you. We'll work on you. I know, right? Like <laughs> I'm gonna take your course, right? <laughs> we, we, we'll get you there. So, what's your favorite genre to read right now? 
Um, I always really like nonfiction. I like a true story or, or things like that. Um, I'm, my team make fun of me because I'm always just reading like a terribly depressing, like giant 800 page book. Um, but that's, that's what I really like to read. Um, last year I went through a phase of just reading stuff about the ocean. Um, I really missed oh. that's, uh, you know, in lockdown, I, I realized that, um, like we're on Lake Ontario, which is really nice, but the smell of the ocean is just, I, I really, really missed it. So I read books from like the history of shipping containers um, to wow. like this story of these uh, whaling communities in Indonesia who are, you know, they're the last people standing in this type of community and um, to Moby Dick, which I didn't finish. <laughs> <obviously>. <laughs> Still on my night this, send. <laughs> it sounds like the makings of research for a really cool book at some point down the road. I'm just saying. Potentially, I mean potentially, yeah. I tend to get, I go down little rabbit holes like that. Um, in in terms of like different like just reading about the, like water basically <laughs> yeah yeah I think that's super cool you never know what you're gonna end up writing about then you know I, I really do think you're gonna end up writing something I don't know why I get the vibe about you <laughs> someday someday my mom my mom thinks her life story would be really interesting so I'm just like <laughs> well there you go <laughs> did she love the water is she a mermaid she's a mermaid uh... right <laughs> she will be in my story that's it fantastic yep. there we go <laughs> okay so what interested you in the very beginning to work with Kobo then was it just the tech side of things and being able to merge those things or was it Kobo in specific you were like this company is just really cool I want to be able to work with them the whole notion of uh an e-reader was sort of new to me I kind of uh I was given one when I left Ireland it was like you you need this now because you know you you only have a, your books <laughs> exactly you only have a backpack and, and here this is so um it, it was more so the interest in the technology itself of having like a million books in one places um because when you're kind of traveling or backpacking for a, a long period of time you only have maybe two books on you and you know you you take the one that's in the hostel and you leave your book behind you and and yeah. that's kind of how it goes so it like the idea of of having something like having so many of them in one place really appealed to me um and then kind of working with Kobo and and just the whole uh when I started it was still very like a, a startup you know um so it had a really interesting um interesting vibe uh to have that I wasn't expecting to find in Toronto um unbeknownst to me tons of startups here <laughs> you know so um but yeah it was sort of uh yeah that's kind of what drew me in so when you came from Ireland was it literally just this nomadic backpack experience that brought you to Canada and that's how you ended up there or was it was there something else that brought you there um a little bit of both I think I've always wanted to live in a like a very big city um like I love Ireland it's near and dear to my heart um but it is a very it's a very big small town um so there was <laughs> there was something about living in a you know the hustle and bustle of a, of a city that really appealed to me um and Canadians themselves are just such wonderful people I, I had friends that had lived here that just loved it um and you know it's funny when somebody says to you like you'd really like living in this place um and then you end up doing it you're like yeah they were they were right <laughs> I see what that meant. Yeah. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. I suppose the climate's pretty similar as well in a lot of ways. Oh no, it's wonderfully different. Uh, it? it doesn't rain okay. here. I hate okay. the rain. <laughs> uh, my husband's the same. He's from England and he's like, I could take this any day over here in Minnesota. He hates the winter, but oh, it's... I know. I never understand when Irish people move to Vancouver because I'm like, don't you know that it rains there all the time? <laughs> um, so no, Toronto is relatively dry. Like it gets a little bit wet in the autumn, but no, the um it's like the temperature differences are uh, significant. Um, really? I had never experienced that cold um, because no, it never really gets that cold in Ireland. It's just consistently damp, you know? Oh, gotcha. Okay. Well, so in your opinion, I'm very curious about Kobo because I'm, I'm relatively new-ish to working in the back end of it. Um, I've been published through Kobo on and off throughout my years as I'm trying to find my way <laughs> in the wide spectrum. But what is it um, about Kobo that makes it different from other self-publishing platforms in Kobo writing life? Like how is it, how is it different in your opinion? Um, I think like the Kobo writing life platform uh, kind of ties in with Kobo's ethos in general, which is 
just wanting um, to make the reading experience the best that's possible. Um, Kobo only sells books. Uh, you know, we're not trying to get you into our ecosystem to then sell you something else, like from a uh, like a customer perspective. Like we really spend, a, a, like all of our effort is spent on making digital reading really good, making it better. Like what's wrong? How can we improve? Um, so I think with Kobo Writing Life, it's it's that ethos really is is front and center as well. Um, that so with the authors, we take that and you know we want you to put your books in front of these readers, however they want to read them. So I really think that that's sort of like the main difference is that you know we're going to encourage you to publish in as many platforms. We're going to try and help you get into different kind of types of digital reading, whether it's an audiobook or Kobo Plus or or two libraries. Um, yeah, I think that that really is the the main difference that we're just trying to trying to get your books in front of there and, and we just genuinely care about making reading better. <laughs> Absolutely. I know that that's definitely something that uh, like even before I've talked to you and before I talked to Mark, uh, I have a, a dear friend, uh, Liza Street, who is just she's she, she sings your praises all the time, all the time. Okay. Anyway, she was she was one of those women who are like, OK, I don't care how you publish wide, but just make sure you go to Kobo directly. <laughs> And I was like, okay, that, that sounds interesting, but all right, let's try it. And um, she was the one that talked to me about how some of the benefits that happen when you do publish directly. And so I was just wondering if you could tell my audience a little bit more about what that might be and why they should maybe consider doing that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think, you know, the first part is you will earn more money uh, if you publish direct. And and I think that that um, is important to authors. You know, this is your livelihood. And <laughs> especially as wide authors, you're in multiple platforms. So it's good to get um, as many pennies as possible um, and dollars and many dollars. Um, but so I think that that would be the main thing. So we're, we're not taking an aggregator fee. You're going to earn more on, on each sale there. Um, and then the other part is that uh, we have a lot of stuff that's available con just to Cobra Writing Life authors. So um, for instance, it's our uh, promotions tab is exclusive to our authors um, purely because we've built this whole team that are there to just service the authors and, and, and try and you know, promote the books within Kobo and outside of Kobo as much as possible. Um, so there's this little tab that um, kind of goes through and has areas where authors can pay to be involved in different promotions. And these are really, really key spots throughout our site and they're included in different emails. Um, you know, all of our emails are targeted and genre specific. So again, really trying to like get the readers the books that they want in front of them. Um, so if you want to be featured into areas like this, you kind of just have to come direct. It's a, a you know, it's just a, a little bit of a, of a thanks kind of reward. <laughs> I love that. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I think also the ease, uh, what we hear honestly is that um, one of our platform is one of the easier ones to use. Um, so I would say go to um, your kind of main uh, retailers direct if you can, if you have the time. And then use the aggregators for to get into like multiple um, other places that might be a little bit harder to set up an account. So we try and make it as easy as possible so that it really isn't um, an F, uh, like a question of your time. Like, you know, you should publish your book and that should be up really quickly. And then then you get to focus on writing the next one and then like also selling those books. And I can say for from my own experience, how fast it is going through Kobo Direct. I mean, I. I published two books this past week, actually, uh, through Kobo Direct, and both of them are up within 24 hours. I mean, it was incredible how quickly they went up. Uh, one of them being, I, we, were, we were talking the last time, um, the my nonfiction book, The Right Frame of Mind, finally up on Kobo. I did it yesterday <laughs> or two days ago. or three, I don't know when it was. This week is a blur, but it's finally up there. Um, Excellent. So now I need to pick your brain about these promotion tab things. Is there a trick to getting selected? Is there something like, like, is there a... Uh, selection process where people behind the scenes are looking at it? Because I know that you guys do actually um, take a look at these things and it's a person behind here. It's not just like a an algorithm picking it. it so is. What, what, what does that look like? Is there a trick to being able to be uh, chosen? Yeah, I guess to kind of uh, explain a little bit better, it might be good to just say with Kobo's merchandising in general, um, we tend to balance um, algorithmic merchandising. So kind of like the computers behind the scene, like generating what they think the next book is with humans that are actually curating them. Um, so we have um, content sales teams throughout in our key territories. Um, we like to take what we call like a, a globally local view of these things, right? So we know that selling a book in Canada is not quite the 
same as selling a book in France. There's there's a real finesse and difference to those things, which is why we have like teams on the ground to kind of work on that. You know, we have a corporate writing life team in France, in the Netherlands, in Italy to to help with those things. Um, but so we definitely have humans that are kind of going through it. Um, they're using the the algorithms because it it's tremendously helpful. Yeah, um, it lets us to go through books much quicker. Um, but there still is a person sort of going through these things. So. Um, I think a bit of advice for kind of getting seen within the promotions tab is depending on the promotion that you're going for, um, I think really think about the one you're going to try and find the promotion that really suits the book and have a reason for going for it, not just because there's a promotion there, um, but a lot of them have um, uh, empty uh, like a, a text box so you can tell us a little bit about your book. So I'd we really encourage you to use that, um, whether or not, um, you know, you've gotten a book bug and you're looking to kind of just latch on to that promotion like that's really important for us to, to know. Um, because we want to help your book succeed if you're already getting a lot of external eyes on it like we want to like spotlight that on Kobo um, or maybe you've redone the cover um, maybe you've completely redone a book that had been published five years ago and and you rebranded revamped like that's cool for us to know as well um, and what we're noticing kind of more and more in these days is um, authors that had been uh, publishing solely on Amazon are now kind of putting their their um, <laughs> as I'm dipping their toe in the water the water analogies <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, to the to go. <laughs> I don't know what you mean. What are you talking about? <laughs> um, but you know, people that are going wide for the first time, um, that's really good for us to know. Um, like if you're trying to build this wide series, because you know, um, that lets us know that you're not brand new to this game. You kind of understand selling your books. Um, we just want to help you sell your books on Kobo. Um, so stuff like that, I would say, would be kind of key. And, and also, don't be afraid to reach out if you have questions. Um, it's all kind of about building those relationships and, and letting us letting us know how we can, can best help. I and don't that. be dismayed at rejections. There's a lot of volume. A lot of the time, it's sheer volume. So um, I like to say the worst case scenario, your books are being put in front of the right eyes. Like, yeah. so just keep applying. I love that. That was one of the things that Mark and I talked about too, was um, that concept of building those relationships. It's so different. Like if you are uh, an Amazon only author, you think it's like, it's this big conglomerate thing. And it's like so nebulous and good luck talking to anybody where, you know, with Kobo, with some of the smaller retailers, I don't know if small is the right word, but smaller than Amazon. Um, it's, it's so it's such a breath of fresh air to be able to know that there's an actual person that you can communicate with and you can have that relationship with and start to, you know, develop more of a one-on-one -on -one kind of aspect. You know what I mean? It just, it, it feels so much, I don't know, it feels so much nicer as an indie who's, you know, for the most part, solopreneur doing the, all the stuff and having that, that capability. I love that. Oh, well, we learn a lot also from indies. Um, you know, sometimes I think we get, we're so focused on Kobo and our partners and, and things like that, um, that, you know, the indie world moves very quickly. So it's always really helpful for us to like um, have suggestions for promotions or, you know, even if it's a new type of genre that we maybe not have been on our radar that is like just really popular right now. Um, like I know some, one of the biggest promotions that we run that's really popular was a suggestion by an author. She was just like, hey, I wanna get all these authors together and we're gonna do a, this giant promotion. Like, can you do it? And we were like, okay, yeah, we'll figure it out. And it's been really successful and we sort of run those regularly. So um, we're definitely open to listen because um, like I said, you guys know how to sell your own books. Um, it's just trying to find like our readers, like the Kobo readers. That's really cool. So what, what would be the best way for an author then to get a suggestion over to you? Is it through the promotions tab or would it be like an email? Uh, an email, probably. Um, I might get lost in the promotions tab. So an email is always good to have have your receipts. Um, but yeah, you could email the team at writinglife at kobo.com. Um, it's a very small team. So like we're all in there. Um, I don't be discouraged that if it's just kind of a, a generic email or anything, I'm in there. Everyone, everyone is in there. So uh, yeah, there's a handful of us that are looking at that. Sure. That's awesome. So in specific, do you have any tips or tricks on what authors can do to make Kobo work better for them? Like if they're new ish, kind of like me, maybe it's for me, maybe it's for other people. How can you, <laughs> how can we get Kobo to work um, the best it can for us as indies? Like, is it through the promotions tab and emailing you, or is it just trial and error? What, what would you suggest? I think, um, 
that it's good to think about Kobo um, on a global sense, um, to kind of think outside of North America or kind of like the key region. So, um, you know, there are 16 currencies available for you to set your price in. And there's a reason that we have those 16 is that, you know, we do have readers all over the world. So I think that might be the biggest um, thing to just kind of shift that mindset. Um, and just kind of, yeah, make sure that you're optimizing your pricing and, and optimizing your, your metadata and things like that. Um, definitely using the promo tool, I think, is key to kind of get a foothold in. And um, yeah, feel free to email us and, and build those relations as well. You know, have me on your podcast. It's good. I guess. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to you on Kobo Writing Live. You know, whichever. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it. Oh my goodness. Okay. So I have to ask you about the audiobook side of things, because this is a, an area I have not uh, tiptoed over into just yet because I'm using find a way currently for my audiobooks. but do you recommend using, cause I know I've got the, the audio tab in Kobo writing life as well. Do you recommend the same kind of situation to go direct for audiobooks in Kobo too? I do for the same reasons. Um, but I would say that find a way are, are wonderful and they have, uh, distribution in so many places um so it, it you know can sometimes be easier to just have the one person place especially with the audiobook side um but if you have the means to come direct and you know you're not too bothered about kind of uploading the audio file or anything i definitely would recommend it um you'll find that it will be published as quickly as an ebook because we, we do everything in-house so we process all our audio files and things like that directly um, and then we do also do audiobook promotions. We've been doing quite a lot of them this year, actually, was that uh, we were really ramping up our audio promotions. Um, they're not available in the promotions tool yet, but we hope to have that in the future. Um, but there's just an external mailing list where my colleagues have been sort of organizing me. So um, it's a good opportunity to be able to, to do different promotional, um, uh, different promotions for the audiobooks. But that's super cool. Okay, so that that's something that I'll be adding to my list of things to do. It's like a never ending list you find so find out these cool new things and now all of a sudden it's like okay one more thing I got to try out and test. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, absolutely. So I was one of the questions I have on here but you kind of answered it already. Um, so but maybe there's more so are there any new developments happening in Kobo writing life or in the platform itself I know we've talked about the readers but is there anything that you guys are working on for authors on the, the back end that we should be aware of. Yeah, yeah, we're always, always working on tons of stuff, but it just whether or not it's visible, you know, there's always a lot of uh, back end work going on. Right. Um, I think right now, a lot of our focus is on Kobo Plus, which is the subscription program. Um, so we have this available. Um, so it's very similar to Kindle Unlimited with the big caveat being that it's non exclusive. So we really encourage people if you're wide to also publish with Kobo Plus. Um, it's available just in a couple of really key territories being um, Belgium, the Netherlands, Portugal and Canada. Um, so it's kind of exceeded our expectations with how it's going in Canada so far. And I would say to like, we will go to other regions before the end of this year, hope, hope, fing, fingers crossed. Um, nice. This is, <laughs> you're recording me, right? I should be more careful. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I, I would say to keep an eye on um, just different areas where that'll be available. And then from the author side, um, what we're, our, the team is working on right now, which I'm, I'm really excited for us to roll it out to more people is um, really fine tuning our author dashboard. Um, indies love information. You want the data, you want it right now. And um, we want to make sure that we're giving as much live information as possible. So the first step to this is that we're integrating like audiobook sales and kind of making fancy graphs and, and just giving you access into like your pre-order data, your free downloads um, in one nice space. And then we'll be adding kind of like your Kobo Plus stats, your library stats and things like that as, as we go on. Um, so that's probably that's the biggest thing that's in beta right now. We have a few authors that are um, have access and we hope to roll it out more and more. So if anyone is interested in, in getting access, if you have audiobooks on Kobo, um, yeah, send us an email. We can definitely uh, enable this for you. It's buggy, so just just bear with us. <laughs> but it's gonna look beautiful when we're when it's ready. <laughs> so speaking of that, is there a specific um uh you not URL? Is there a specific web browser? There is the word that I'm looking for that works best for Kobo, like in order to upload and get everything organized and whatnot. I don't think so. I think it like it, it's optimized to work on any browser and uh, mobile optimized as well. Um, I mean, personally, I default to Chrome because I I use it the most. Um, 
but I actually use Safari a lot as well which people is their like most hated browser so <laughs> um yeah I, I think it's really optimized to to work on all of them um some of the work that we did um a lot earlier this year is um was around accessibility um so that was a lot of work on Cobalt Writing Life that isn't necessarily seen by authors but we had to make sure that um our website was sort of compliant with accessibility and we actually got like they emailed us being like really really good job this is this is the best website so just to make sure that you know a screen reader can really easily read it that we can allow access to things we're not using colors that are are kind of really difficult for people to um kind of access or navigate um so because of that work i i would think that it would be kind of probably um modified to work really well on all browsers okay cool that that is very helpful um so i want to backtrack just a little bit to um the subscription program so can you talk just a little bit about that because i know i'm in it but I, i'd love to learn a little bit more about how it works and i'm sure my audience would as well what what are the benefits of that and like why should authors join Yep. So uh, it's uh, Coco Plus being the subscription program. Uh, we launched it in Belgium and the Netherlands in 2017 um, because there was a really big ask there. Um, we sort of saw that area as, um, you know, there was readers that were reading, but not necessarily like buying books like that so we're kind of like okay subscription seems to be what they those readers specifically want um, and it worked very well so far. Um, especially in conjunction with uh, ball.com uh, to launch there. And as we've expanded to different areas, we're kind of just seeing how, um, and as we all know from spending two years at home, that subscriptions, like I have subscriptions for everything. <laughs> right. <laughs> so that seems to be the way, um, the way forward in uh, media consumption. But so what makes Kobo Plus a little bit different for on the author perspective is that we don't um, pay by kind of like any pages that are going through or any thresholds. We're actually calculating the minutes that your book was read so this is um the amount of time that somebody is actually like spending in your book um oh. and yeah so this it might kind of seem like a, a little sort of uh unusual but it allows us to calculate ebooks and audiobooks and sort of treat them the same and to generate payment the like the same way um sure. so as many minutes as your book is being read we're sort of calculating that um and it's a, a revenue share model so um it's kind of all of our monthly subscribers um, that um, revenue goes into a certain area and with the minutes we use that to calculate the value of your minute and this fluctuates month by month and it also fluctuates by geo because the number of subscribers are different in each geo um, right. and then we kind of multiply your minutes and you get 60 percent of that and that kind of uh that's how we calculate the payout model so um maybe it's a little bit complicated to explain no <laughs> like, I, I totally followed that but oh, okay sure there are some new people that maybe were like what but that's okay yeah, yeah. Okay. it'll make um, sense <laughs> i always find it a bit easier when it's written down or you have like a graph to sort of see um uh but yeah it's it's been uh we find it the fairest model it's we haven't had kind of issues of gamification or anything like that because yeah. it really is just like when somebody's reading and you know we're tracking offline reading and syncing as well so you know you could get reads later because somebody has just synced their device um okay. so yeah we kind of find it the the fairest way there and by what i would recommend about authors um kind of curious about it is to just really try it out um we allowed as much as control as possible um so you can select the geo that you want to put your book in in Kobo plus if you're not really comp like uh if you want to just try out Belgium and the Netherlands maybe you've never sold a book there and you're like this is a way to get those readers you can do that um I recommend putting all of them into all territories um because how how we've kind of found it in terms of readership is that it is a new audience it's it's uh, a new type of reader that isn't the person that's going to be buying these a la carte books um so even when we look at the stats of like um you know i talk to authors all the time and i could show them like here are your top sold books for you know the first half of this year and here's your top read on Kobo plus and they're not the same books um, which is always so interesting to me. And then the library, again, is slightly different too. Um, so it's just all these different streams of readers. Um, so yeah, I like to think about them as like, yeah, the different type of reader. It's the subscriber. They just want everything. That makes sense. And I, th I think you're right. They are definitely different readers. Like for myself, when I was um, not able to read a whole lot, a sub subscription model just wouldn't make sense for me because I'm just not using it. But now that I have deliberately forced myself that in the mornings, that's my reading time. That's it. I can't not have a subscription of some sort. You know what I mean? It just, it wouldn't, it wouldn't work because I'm reading so much all the time and I love it. 
So yeah, exactly. And we're we're being very particular, um, kind of going back to like that globally local view that I was talking about. So when we launched in Belgium and the Netherlands, that was with ball.com. Um, we launched in Canada and we did it just Kobo.com in Canada as our, our home base, our strongest territory. Um, and we're able to roll that out there. And when we went to Portugal, it was slightly different again. Um, we actually partnered with a publisher there, um, Lea. They wanted to make their digital books available and we um, to kind of in a subscription model only. And we lent like kind of have partnered together to bundle like their books and all of our books into this subscription model where readers in Portugal have have access to it. So um, it just sort of just goes back to um, book selling isn't necessarily just, you know, one thing fits everything. And, and we, we really try and, and kind of finesse in each geo that we're in. That is really neat. I love that because like you said, it, the, the different dem demographics and the way people consume books, they have to be so different in different countries and in different areas because of the way that their lives are different and, and everything else. So that is really cool that you tailor the, the models to them. That is neat. I like that a lot. Okay. So for authors who want to, uh, like learn more about you or learn more about Kobo, how do they get in touch with you or how, where should they go to get started with Kobo Writing Life? Sure, I'd say create an account, uh, kobo.com slash writing life. I almost said the wrong website. Um, <laughs> you can go to uh, you can go to our blog for a lot of information, which is kobowritinglife.com. Um, and if you're creating a brand new account um, and you won't see the promotions tab because it's not um, automatically available on all accounts, uh, just because it really is English only focused. Um, so I would say reach out to us at writinglife@kobo.com. Um, ask for access um, and kind of just reach out to the team. At least then you have a have a person that you can talk to. Um, but also we're on all of the social platforms. Um, so if you're like if you know Facebook, Instagram, YouTube is how you get your media. Um, you could definitely check us out there. And then also there is the weekly Kobo Writing Life podcast, um, which we have um, lots and lots of guests. We talk to industry people and writers. Um, it Kind of focuses a bit more on the craft of writing but we do also like follow different indie updates and um, we use it to kind of give people updates on what's going on at Kobo as well and and give you insights there um one if I could recommend a single episode would be um our CEO Michael Tamblin um he did an episode uh, a while back and it was just sort of um it's all about just like why indie writers are essential to Kobo and why we value them so much uh, and he just talks about like you know basically this company was built around knowing the value of, of independent authors and and like wanting to work with them and and yeah it's it's you know maybe it's a bit cheesy I'm just but I'm just like it's a nice to hear from you know the CEO of a company that you work for it's sort of um, I mean I find it a little inspiring to to just know that it's um you know the stuff I'm working on is is so valued yeah absolutely and it it means something to the the higher aspects of the organization. I think that's really critical. It's nice working with companies, uh, whether it's a client that you're working with or, or working with a, a company like Kobo, where you know that those, those people who are really at the top value the people who are kind of making the whole thing happen in a, in a sense. You know what I mean? I love that. That's such a neat Neat yeah, it's one of my favorite things about Kobo, honestly, is that it is a company just full of book lovers. Um, uh, yeah, they were in the office, there was always just, you know, lots of book chat all the time. Um, and that's, you know, still going on, on <clears throat> excuse me, on, on Slack. But it's kind mm -hmm. of my favorite thing is that, yeah, you can have the we, we do everything in the one company. So whether it's, you know, designing the, de the devices, you know, I can kind of go and talk to somebody and be like, okay, tell us what goes into like making this new device and um, learn about all the stuff about e-ink that I didn't think was interesting, but really is. Um, so it's, it's nice to just be able to have that all in one place um, for it to go to that, to go to digital marketing, to the content sales, to just get like, you know, what's the biggest book in Italy right now? And like, should we be reading it? <laughs> right? Oh, how cool is that? Like all of that sounds really cool. It sounds like an, a super cool company just to be in the back end of and be kind of have that access to. It's just crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. It's, it is, I do miss that about the office, about just being able to like, just wander around, ask questions. <laughs> are you all still separated right now? We are, our office is open, but uh, just at a limit, limited capacity. I actually worked there on Wednesday and uh, yeah, it was pretty fun. I brought my dog, he liked it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, um, <laughs> but yeah, it's just reduced capacity for a few people uh, right now and then potentially open up next year. But who knows, things are ever changing. Absolutely. It's been a, an interesting couple of years, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I love working from home though, I have to say. It's really nice. I do too, I do too. Yeah. 
it's regardless of who I'm working for, whether it's myself or I still have a handful of clients. So it's, it's so nice to just be home and be able to see the, the beautiful trees changing colors or the dogs, goodness knows, running around kids. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, Tara, thank you so much for joining us on the Author Revolution podcast. I really appreciate you coming in and talking more about Kobo and sharing Kobo with um, our audience and more about what they're what you guys are all up to and doing. I think they are going to be amazed if they get involved and start doing this whole process and, and starting to uh, work directly with you. I know for me, it, it was one of the best decisions that I did was to go direct. So oh, I, I'm, that's, I'm that's so happy with it. You, you guys are my number two seller. You really are. And so oh. I'm just, I'm, I absolutely am thrilled with going directly with you. And like you were saying with some of the reporting, I, I'm even seeing some of the reports changing and I like the way that you're doing it. And so for me, it's, it's very cool to see it, how things are transforming. And, and I'm just, I'm relatively new to the back end of this. It's only been a few months. And so for me, it's really neat to see that evolution happening in real time. So nice. I'll, I'll tell our team, they always love the feedback. So, um, yeah. because our, our developers don't have the, the direct author, uh, uh, kind of communication so sure. they always have the feedback I, I'll send this to them <laughs> absolutely that sounds great <laughs> well thank you so much I appreciate you being here oh thanks for having me this is really great